I'm Teacher Im. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I will show you how to answer limit and continuity question in your exam. I will also show you where marks are given. Let's start. Now, for the first question, you are asked to find limit approaching positive infinity for this given function. What you need to do is look at the highest power or degree of the denominator. For this case, we are looking for x squared. Take x squared and divide by all the elements inside the function, like this. Now, what will happen here next will be the values of 4 divided by x squared will transform to 0. Why? Because the place of x squared will be changed with positive infinity. So 4 divided by positive infinity, which is mean 4 is divided by a very, very big number. According to the properties, it will turn to zero. When this happens, your answer will be here. Okay, you will get 2, 1 over 2. Marks will be given when you solve the denominator and numerator and when you answer, you calculate the correct answer. Now for these two marks, there's actually a shortcut for this question. But this shortcut can only be used when the numerator and the denominator have the same degree. So what will happen is, you take the constant in front of the new highest power of degree of the denominator and the numerator, for this case, 25 over 4. Just take it and square it and you will get the same answer when you do the previous algebraic steps. Okay? But this shortcut can only be used to check your answer. Now, let's look at the second question. In this second question, you notice there is a square root minus by a number at the denominator. Whenever you see a square root with an, a function inside, you will notice that you have to solve this question by looking for the conjugate. Now, what are conjugates? Now, let's have a look here. Let's say if you have square root of 3x plus 2, the conjugate of this will be square root of 3x minus 2. That is the uh, changing of this sign from plus 2 to minus 2. If you have one a number minus by a function with a square root, what will happen is that number will transform from 1 minus square root x 5x to 1 plus. Notice the change of the sign here. Okay, so that's the conjugate. So now, can you guess what is the conjugate for square root of x, 3x plus 4 minus 5? Yes, you are right. You will get square root of 3x plus 4 plus 5. Now, the change of the symbol is always uh, in between the square root and the number. Okay, so now, how do you solve this kind of case? For a top part, we usually will not touch it yet. We will just solve the one with, with the opposite sign, for example. For this case, is square root 3x plus 4 minus 5 and square root 3x plus 4 plus 5. I can get 
something like this. Now, how did I get this? What I do is I copy whatever is inside the square root. I put it down. And I will take negative 5 times 5. That will give me negative 25. I will write that down too. Now, once I get that, I will try to fill in 7. And I, or I will have try to find or factorize the value or simplify the value if I need. For this case, I will get 3x after simplifying. I will get 3x minus 21. Then I try to factorize it. I will end up with 3 multiplied with x minus 7. Now with this x minus 7 on top in the numerator and x minus 7 on the bottom at the denominator, I can clear it off. And I will end up just with square root 3x plus 4 plus 5 divided by 3. Now, once that is done, I can easily fill in my 7. Limit x approaching 7. I can easily fill in my 7 in the position of x. And I will end up with a simple answer like this. So where are the marks? You will get one marks when you write out the conjugate. One more marks when you fill in the number. Do you notice that whenever you fill in the number, the limit x approaching 7, this symbol will automatically disappear. One mark for that when you do that correctly. And lastly, of course, one mark for the answer. Now, if you notice, this type of question with square root, remember, always try to find the conjugate. Next, what if you have question with modulus? No matter the modulus is on top or at the denominator or on top at the new numerator. The first thing that you need to do is setting the inequality for your modulus. Now what you do is you take x minus 4, fill it in into the, this position. 1 is the bigger than 0, another one is for less than 0. For the value bigger than 0, x minus 4 is positive. For the value x minus 4 less than 0, the sign for x minus 4 is negative. Once that is done, you have to try to set the inequality part. So negative 4, move to the right hand side, it will become positive 4. And for both of them, you will end up something like this. Why do you, I need to do this? Because according to this question, they wanted x moving, approaching 4 from the left hand side. 4 negative means 4 the left hand side. So if you have a straight line like this, uh, you put this into a straight line, you will notice x less than 4 is on the left hand side. So you need this formula. So when x is approaching uh, 4 from the negative, they have that, that, that negative on top there is telling you whether it's approaching from the left hand side or right hand side. So if it 4 negative there means x is approaching uh, 4 from the left hand side. So you are will be looking for the formula which is less than 4. So you will be using x a negative uh, x minus 4 inside the calculation. 
So that's what I'm going to do. So you will, of course, factorize the top portion of the question. And you will notice that you can easily clear them away, x minus 4 away. Now you will end up with only negative x minus 2. So this minus will turn to positive when you open up the brackets. Now, I'm going to put in the number now. So notice if whenever I put in the number x approaching for this case is 4, that limit sign will disappear. And you can easily calculate the answer. Now, three marks for this question. You get, will get one mark if you chose the correct value of x minus 4. The second marks, of course, when you put in the number. And the third marks will be your final calculation. Okay? Sounds easy. Great. Now, let's have a look at this question. In this question number three, what I have is a square root. But if you notice, this square root covers the whole function. So you are not going to use conjugate here. Okay, you are not going to use conjugate here. You are going to use the one with the higher, looking for the highest power of the denominator. So for this case, x. You're going to take x and divide with all the elements in the function. In this case, this x have, can, cannot be divided yet with the square root. You will need to change this into square root of x squared. Because you cannot divide uh, x with something with square root. Okay, so you have to change it into two, the same format. Then only you will take this x squared and divide with all the elements inside the function. Okay, for the denominator is okay. X divided by x and 9 divided by x is, is normal, is okay because it doesn't involve any square root function. So once that is done, you will end up something like this. 4 minus 3 over x plus 2 over x squared. Like the first question just now, and because this limit is moving to infinity, which means x is going to transform to infinity. So 3 divided by infinity means 3 divided by a very, very big number. 2 divided by x squared means 2 divided by a very, very big number squared. And so is 9 divided by x. So all these three parts here, negative 3x, 2x squared, and 9 over x will transform into 0. And you can easily calculate the answer from there. So notice whenever I put in the limit, my symbol limit x approaching positive infinity or a number will disappear. Three marks. The first mark is when you are able to transform, uh, find the highest power from the denominator and divide with all the element. The second marks will be when you are putting in the number and the limit symbol disappear. And the third marks is when you calculate the answer. Okay? Now, I'm sure you can you notice uh, the second part of the question. There is something in the con in the format of conjugate. So do you did you notice that from part one and part two there is a difference? Okay, so let's check out the next part. Now in this part two, it is something with conjugate. For this case, the conjugate is on top. A number 
minus square root. Look, if you would like to try the, uh, to answer this question, since we have already discussed this before, why? You can just pause the video and continue with the working. Okay. When I want to solve this question, what I'll do is I will take the uh, value 1, multiply by 1, and the copy down our, all the values uh, element inside the square root. The symbol in the center of them will be negative. That's what's going to happen. So it's 1 minus, copy the element inside the square root, divided, the one from the denominator, I directly copy it only. Then I try to solve. I will end up something like this. Once this is done, I will get 4 minus x squared. I will try to factorize because I need to simplify before I can solve. So I will factorize 4 minus x squared and it will end up with this. Then I notice x plus 2 and 2 plus x are the same. So I can clear it away and it will end with just this element. Now, I can easily put in the value negative 2 and k is a negative 2 okay let me give the rest the color i will have my negative 2 Sorry for the correction. Now, once I have that put in my negative 2, I will calculate the answer. So that is the marks, of course, for the conjugate. When you solve the conjugate, then when you put in the number, and of course, when you calculate the answer. Okay? Now, in the last part of this question is three marks. And in this question, you are asked to find limit of x approaching 6 for fx. And fx is, mm, there is no element in it. Okay, they didn't give you an equation for fx. So they ask you, what is fx? So, to solve this question, you have to remember the basic properties of limit. What you can do is, you will put limit into all the elements inside the question, except for 3. So, the basic uh, properties of limit, when limit approaches a number, it will transform into the number. For this case, you can substitute 6 minus 4. So there is no problem for that. So we are going to put in the numbers. And we will calculate. Once the calculation is done, limit approaches 6 for fx is going to be 6, 13. So where are the marks? The marks, the first marks, will be where you use the properties of limit. The second marks is when you put in the number like you show. And the last marks, of course, is for your answer. Okay, so this is uh, this question are testing you for the basic properties limit. Now, Back to our question. In this question, you are asked to 
find the modulus value of 3 minus x. So like what we did just now, take whatever is in the modulus, set it up properly, bigger than zero and less than zero. Less than zero, typing error, sorry about that again. Okay, now you have bigger than zero and less than zero. So once you get that, you need to rearrange it so that you will become x less than 3. Why? Because of the negative. When you change the symbol of the x, the value will, the inequality symbol will change. Okay? Or if you think it in a simpler form, it's just take this negative x, move it over, so x is less than 3. Okay? You can do it that way too. But uh, the correct method is, of course, you multiply with uh, negative uh, from the left and the right hand side and so on that you can learn uh, by yourself. If you need uh, me to teach you further how to change the symbol, please leave a comment at the bottom. Now, what you're going to have here is x is less than 3, you will be using this symbol, this formula. When x is bigger than 3, you will be using this second formula. So let's check out the question. According to the question, they ask you to evaluate the following limits. Inside the question, it is not stated right-hand side or left-hand side for this element, but they ask if the limit exists for this function. Now, for a limit to exist for a modulus function, the left-hand side of the limit and the right-hand side of the limit have to be the same. Okay, so I will test with the right-hand side, means x approaching 3 from the right-hand side. Now, when x approaches 3 from the right-hand side, which means I'm going to need x bigger than 3, the right-hand side of 3, so 3.1, 3.2, and so on. So I'm going to use this formula. So in that formula, negative 3 minus x, and I need to simplify it with the denominator. So I will end up uh, something like this, and it can be cleared away and I will end up 1 over 2x. So the place for x, I'm going to change with 3. So 2 times 3 minus 1. I will get 1 over 5. I will get 1 mark for this. Okay? Because there's only 4 marks for this question. Now, for the second part of the question, I also need to check okay let me do some correction there again this is supposed to be zero okay now back to my question we are looking at this limit from the left hand side of three so from the left hand side of three i need x which is less than three when x is less than 3, the value that I need is 3 minus x. Okay, don't, don't get uh, confused. Why did I write, why did I not write 3 minus x and I wrote uh, x minus 3? Because I just want it to be the same with the denominator and I can solve it, uh, I can clear it away easily. You can write 3 minus x and later put in the negative. Okay, it's up to you. All right. Now, I will clear away the x minus 3 with the negative. 
if you don't put the negative, you will need to put the negative uh, later. If you just directly copy 3 minus x, it's the same because by the time you put in the uh, negative, it's going to be the same value as 3 minus x. Okay, so don't get confused about that. Now, clear it away and you will end up with negative 1 over 2x minus 1. Try to solve it by putting in the number and you will end up with negative 1 over 5. So you will get... Now, just now, do you remember that the question asks you whether it exists or not? So for uh, equation or a function to ex both limit to uh, to ex for the function to exist, both the left hand side limit and the right hand side limit have to be the same. For this case, it is not, and you need to show the examiner that you understand that when the limit on the left hand side and the right hand side is not the same. The conclusion is the limit does not exist. So you get your one mark when you calculate the limit from the left hand side and four marks for the question. The two marks is for the conclusion. You have to show the examiner that you know that the two limit is not the same. And because it is not the same, therefore the limit does not exist for this function. Okay, so it's very important to write this set. Okay, limit on the left hand side is not equals to the limit on the right hand side. And if even if you write if limit to the left hand side, is not the same with the limit on the right hand side or the limit from the right hand side is not the same with the limit on the left hand side. It's okay as long as you get it right. You must write. It carries one mark. And then do the conclusion. Okay, it's very important to write the conclusion whether the limit exists or not. Right. Now, when you look at this question, it looks like there is a question which involves conjugate, right? But of course, we will first think before we uh, settle with the conjugate, we will first try with the substituting method. Try to put nine inside here. Can you get an answer? If you get a zero at the bottom, then only will we try with the conjugate. So for this case, when you put in 9x squared minus 7 times 9 minus 8, you will get a 0. So which means even if you factorize it, because you cannot solve this without factorizing. So you try to factorize it and when you put in 9 inside there, 9 minus 9, it will trans transform into a 0. Okay, so when you have a fraction, a big fraction like this, try to fill in the numbers, a substituting method, the, or factorizing method. You try that first before you do the conjugate. Okay, you try to, to, to simplify. Now, once you have already factorized and notice that you can't solve this question yet, because usually when they have uh, a lot of brackets on uh, it is factorized on top there might be something at the bottom that you can factorize it with so you try to to do that first now if for this case when you factorize the denominator you notice it transform into zero so zero times something is still zero so you need to do the the conjugate part okay so can you guess what's the conjugate of course, you can the square root of x plus 3. Now, what will happen here is you will settle with the conjugate, okay? Square root of x plus 3, and you will end up like this, okay? So your top portion here, the one with the square root with this different symbol, you will combine them. 
one at the denominator, don't touch it yet. Not yet. Okay, so how do you do that? Just now I mentioned already, whatever is inside the square root, you copy down, then the number and the number, multiply them together, and the center usually is a minus, because one negative multiply with one positive, you will get a minus. Okay, now you will notice x minus 9 and the 1 at the denominator, you can clear them away. So you will end up something like this. Now you can try to solve the question by putting in limit approaching 9, putting in 9 into the calculation. And you, your answer is there. Now remember, this question asks for whether this limit exists. So you have to make a conclusion for that. You have to tell the examiner the limit exists because it reached a number 2 over 11. Now, your marks, when you put in the conjugate, when you calculate the number, you put in the number. And lastly, when you calculate the answer. Okay. And of course, the conclusion. So four marks for this question. Now, what if you have questions that ask you for exponent, limit of a number to exponent? So what you're going to do is you are going to try to factorize because if you put in here, uh, if you put in here without factorizing, you will notice exponent divided by uh, power of zero and exponent power of zero, both of them will transform into one minus one zero, which is uh, something you can solve. So you need to factorize it. So you will factorize the exponent into two uh, sets of function. And you will notice the top one and the denominator, the numerator and the, and the denominator can be solved, uh, cleared away easily and you will end up something like this. Now, it's time to put in your number, x moving, approaching zero. When x is zero, you will have exponent power of zero plus exponent power of zero. Therefore, you will have one plus one. So the answer is one over two. Three marks for this question, but the first marks is when for when you factorize the uh, exponents. Second one, of course, when you fill in and lose the symbol of the limit. And the last one, of course, is when you calculate the answer. Now, in this question number six, you see fraction. Whenever you see a fraction uh, question involving fraction plus and minus the first job that you need to do is to combine the fraction so what i do here is i take the fraction from this part multiply over to one and then because of the x uh, they already have an x on this side so i will divide by the x and it will end up by 2x plus one same goes for the other one, okay? Once I combine the fraction, I will have a conjugate there, right? I will have a conjugate there. What will happen here is, same like just now, Okay, so I will take whatever inside the bracket and copy it down. The number will multiply and the symbol will be negative. Okay, so once I have deal with the conjugate of the question, I can try to solve and I will notice I will get something like this. Okay, so what will happen here is 
I will get one mark when I apply the conjugate inside the question. Solving it, we'll get another one more mark. So now it's time to put in the zero and I will end up with one. One mark when I put in the number and one mark for the answer. Okay. You can always check the working again. You can repeat this video and see how I work it out. Now for question number seven, you can't use the conjugate method because there's a cubic as, as for the question. Okay, it's not the square root. So conjugate doesn't work here. Now for this question, I need to let this whole set cube root of x plus 8 I let it be u. Then I need to find the value of x. So I will change it into the format of x. Now, you have to be very careful. Whenever you do this, you also need to change the value of x when x approaching 0. So when x approaching 0, when x is 0, your cubic is going to be 0 equals to u power of 3 minus 8. So bring it over and you will have u power of 3 equals to 8 and you will notice your u is 2. Once you have this, then transform the function given inside the question into limit of u. Okay, so what you have here is your u, okay, minus 2 divided by u square cubic of u, which you get from the calculation here, minus 8. Okay, cubic of u minus 8, whatever you calculated here. And please remember to change the limit u moving to 2. Okay, no more x. Once this is done, try to factorize right, the denominator and to this format. So you will get three marks for this part. Okay, because you can't you still can't solve this because it's uh, equals to zero at the bottom. So you need to factorize it. Okay. Once you already factorize it, you will uh, solve, be able to solve this question. So you can uh, clear away the numerator and the denominator. And what is left is u squared plus 2u plus 4. When that is done, put in the number u moving approaching 2 and you can get the answer. Okay, so when limit approaching zero, you transform it into u. Why? Because you cannot solve this using the conjugate if they give you a cube root, All right? So that's the last of my question. Okay, that's the final two marks or the question whenever you, so you get a hang of it whenever you uh, do a cubic or when you do a conjugate, when you change the formula, you will get one mark for it. When you fill in the formula, you lose your limit value, you the symbol, you will get one mark off for it. And when you calculate the answer, you will get one mark for it. Okay, that's all from me for this, for this video. Please subscribe for the second part of limit and continuity, where I'm going to talk more on how to solve um, the exists and uh, when they ask whether the limit exists and uh, or the limit continue, uh, it's a continuous limit, okay? That will be in my second part of this video. 
please like if you find that this video is useful for you and share it with all your friends. You can also subscribe to this channel, Teacher Im channel, if you want uh, to be notified uh, for my next uh, video. Just click on the bell button. That's all from me today. Thank you very much. And I hope this is useful for you. Goodbye. See you in your, the next video. Bye.